My dear brothers and sisters, today I want us just to venture on something very different a little bit, and that is relative to what the welfare program of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the way it is actually designed. And uh, I remember reading some of these things about the welfare, how the welfare program is actually being run, and how the church has really organized this welfare program. I was shocked. I was shocked. There is no any other organization in the world that runs a perfect, such a perfect system like what I'm seeing here. You know, no organizations in the world that can run such a perfect system <laughs> like the one I'm seeing here. And this is one of the greatest evidence you can ever see that actually it is God behind everything. This is actually God behind everything. And uh, without further ado, let me just invite you so that you can see how the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints actually organizes and handles the welfare program. Please welcome. From the fields and the orchards to the factories, the canneries, the giant warehouses, hundreds of thousands of people from all over the world. This is the Mormon Church's welfare system. It's huge, it's impressive, and gets zero funding from the government. The managing director here is Steve Peterson. The idea of caring for those who are in need, we consider to be a scriptural mandate. A mandate Mormons say comes from the Bible and from Mormon scripture received through revelation to its prophets. And that's grown into a wonderful program worldwide uh, that focuses on caring for those who are in need, uh, uh, to relieve suffering and to foster self-reliance and to give opportunities for service, both for those that receive things and for those that, that are, are helping out. That concept has grown to helping not only members, but non-members through humanitarian aid worldwide. And it's apparently been done very well. This is Richard Humphreys, the manager of the Bishop Storehouse. We've had the Department of Defense, we've had the Army, the Navy, the Marines, FEMA, They've all come out and they says, wherever we go, we've been told, go see how the Mormons do it, because they're always the first ones on the site. After Katrina smashed into New Orleans, Mormon convoys were the first to arrive with 450 truckloads. As that hurricane was circling around in the Gulf of Mexico, we didn't know where it was going to come inland. So we formed a big semicircle that ran from Texas to South Carolina. And as soon as that hurricane hit New Orleans, those trucks were sent out and they were there within hours. Those trucks have a beehive on the side, a symbol very important to Mormonism. It is said to represent industry, harmony, order, frugality, and the sweet results of toil. And these people are busy bees on the church's farms and ranches that are some of the largest in the U.S., in their canneries and processing plants. And the fruit of this labor is given away. Well, not exactly given. Those who can are required to work for it. Heber J. Grant, the prophet who started the welfare system during the Great Depression, said its purpose was to do away with the curse of idleness and to help people help themselves. Are they taking care of you okay? Yes, thank you. Bishop Paul Roberts is an attorney and a volunteer lay pastor. Sometimes it helps them feel like they're worth something. Um, I talk to some people and they don't feel like they're worth anything because they can't find a job, they can't provide for their family. And you ask them to go and do some service. They, they come here and they help at the storehouse, or you have them go in and help and sort through clothes at the eye. Or it helps them to, to understand that they, are, they have value and they can contribute. Betty Ambutu is a refugee from Congo and a convert. She has a job, but the church helps her with her food. Members also come to her home to help her learn English. I feel good. Yeah, they help me for everything. I have a problem. They help me. They do need to work for what they receive. Unless they can't. If they're physically unable or they can't work for what they receive, then yeah, we make accommodations. Cindy Trishman is a Church Relief Society president, an unpaid appointed position always held by a woman. She volunteers many hours a week helping members and non-members get their lives back in order. Here in the Bishop Storehouse, she's helping a member choose groceries. There are 115 Bishop Storehouses around the country. It's important for people to not feel hungry when they're trying to think of getting a job or when they're trying to think of getting a home. Other helpers here include Wilma and Devon Schofield. They're on what is called a service mission, which typically lasts a year and a half. It makes you feel good when somebody comes in and they get 
a real small order and they're crying all the way out the door because they have something for the night. Whether it's in the bakery, the cheese factory, or the thrift store, volunteers are everywhere. Head of production and distribution, Don Johnson. Just in our production and distribution activities, we have over a million and a half hours of volunteer service. And we could not do this without those volunteers. Hi. Lay pastors like Paul Roberts are called bishops. They're the linchpins of the welfare system. If a family needs help, they call the bishop. He's the man. And we work with people to help them get back on their feet. So sometimes they need temporary assistance, like they'll need a food order or they'll need some utilities paid for. Um, we, we stand ready to help. Sonny Cisneros doesn't go to church much, but with a baby on the way and unexpected medical bills, the bishop stepped in to help out. It's good food for a whole month or so. So yeah, I'm very grateful and thankful for it. This is Welfare Square near downtown Salt Lake City. It includes a job training center, grocery store, bakery, and a second-hand store called Deseret Industries. It's the hub of the program, easy to spot by the towering grain silo. Okay, you see behind me here a grain storage facility, which happens to be one of 29 that we have in the church. Uh, this holds our strategic grain reserve. This, uh, this particular one, which is our oldest facility, holds 16 million pounds of hard red uh, winter wheat. Much of the welfare system for members is funded by what are called fast offerings. These are donations from families who fast for two meals one Sunday each month and give the equivalent amount of money to the ward bishop. The humanitarian fund comes from separate contributions and is almost always for non-members. We are sending aid to certainly to Western Europe, but we also have projects that are going on in Africa. Uh, we have projects that are going on in the Middle East where we're providing aid in, for the refugee camps in, in Turkey, for people that have come out of Syria and Iraq, same thing in Jordan. That would also include local aid to some of the faith-based clinics and homeless shelters in and around Salt Lake City. Laurel Ingham is with the 4th Street Clinic, funded mostly by the government and intended only for the homeless. The clinic also receives aid each year from the church. I think the welfare program is truly amazing. Truly amazing. I mean, we are really given a gift. It's very much a donation. Use it where you want. Use it where it can best be used. We have reporting back to them to say this is how much we've used. Right. This is how many people have been served. But beyond that, there is no strings for us attached whatsoever. This is the Bishop Central Storehouse. It's huge, over half a million square feet, built to withstand the 7.5 earthquake. Everything goes through here to the smaller 114 storehouses around the country. There are enough provisions to meet the projected demands of members and non-members in the U.S. and Canada for two years. When we look at the products throughout this building, 80% of the product is produced and packaged by the church. John Hopkins is the manager of this operation. First, he takes me through the refrigeration area, which is larger than a football field. This wow. is negative 13 Fahrenheit. Wow, I believe it. Yeah. What you're seeing here is uh, meat storage, and it's about four to six months of inventory. In this facility, we have 65,000 pallet spaces. It's approximately 27 hundred truckloads. There are no strings attached to this. It's not because they're members or because we feel some obligation because of their beliefs that we help them. This is aid that we give to anybody just because they're in need and we feel that it's the right thing to do. As the church continues to grow, the need will get even greater, especially since most of the growth is in Central and South America and Africa. For Religion and Ethics News Weekly, I'm Lucky Severson in Salt Lake City. Whoa. This is God. This is actually God. There's nothing more you can say about. There's no human being that can come with such a, like a program. No. This is actually God. You can see the program is actually being driven by volunteers. No employees there, just simply volunteers. You show me any organization that can do something like that. And this is purely for humanitarian, for helping people, you know, and, and, and somebody will be busy telling you that the Mormons are cult, the Mormons or the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is a cult and all that. But when you ask him, like, ever since, what has your church done to the community? You know? 
Sometimes we speak things that even angels fear to speak. Sometimes people just speak things without even, you know, analyzing what they are talking about. They only speak things to, you know, impress the masses. But in actual sense, they know very well they are not speaking the truth. Otherwise, thank you very much. God bless you. And if you have any comments, please remember to all the videos that I've shared, you can drop in a comment and elaborate on more, or even you can ask a question, and my dear wonderful brothers and sisters will be able to answer you from those comments. Otherwise, thank you, God bless you, and see you next time.